And ha you, you can actually sit here if you want. Or. Okay. Hi everybody, thank you for coming. So who is from a batch uh, six? <laughs> okay, well, uh, nice to uh, meet you. I hope uh, I will have the chance to uh, coach you during the uh, mentoring hours. Uh, I already put some of them this afternoon and probably for the uh, upcoming Mondays. So why are we here today? To story tell. To tell story. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so we are here to avoid pitch fatigue. Because in a few weeks, you'll be pitching for your upcoming demo day. And I think it's better to think ahead about your business versus thinking of it two weeks before the pitching day. What is my story? So now you're wondering, OK, she looks like Asian. She has this French accent. You're right. <laughs> okay. So I was born in South Korea. And uh, I was adopted to French parents. So I went from a rice diet to a bread diet. And so I grew up in Normandy. And you know, in Normandy, when it's rainy, there's not so much to do. So I used to read a lot of fairy tales, you know, going to the libraries, to the bookstores. And you know, it actually shaped my mind into a very positive one, which is very weird for a French person. <laughs> so those readings actually led me to study literature. And then after literature, I wanted you know, to check out all the settings you know, of all those stories where all those stories would happen. So I wanted to travel. So how do you travel? You study journalism. So I started uh, my career of journalist in Brussels in a very international setting, you know, people speaking at least four languages. I could brush up my Spanish skills living La Vida Loca in Brussels. And what I learned in Brussels is the attention to details. When you're telling a story, paying attention to details and telling about details, it's very important. So we were covering this story for the French uh, National Public Radio. And we wanted to cover the story of scuba divers. They were coming back from the Red Sea and they drifted for, I think, two days um, doing, you know, the star. So no sharks, but they were alive. And we were supposed to interview them at the airport. So how do you find them? It was really hard. But we could see that on the bag of the mother-in-law, it was written the name of the city where the scuba divers were from. So we could find out before everybody. And how did we tell the story? Those guys were coming from the airport and their face were like lobsters, very red until here. And under, it was white. So, you know, people, they could picture, you know, they could imagine, you know, their life during two days, you know, their faces burned by the sun. So that's what I learned in Brussels, you know, telling about details, including them in your story. And then I wanted to go where the action is. The action is at that time, the action was in India. So I went to work in New Delhi as a foreign correspondent for the French television. And what I learned there is that how do you interest a far a remote audience with a story that resonates when they're brushing their teeth, when they're talking to their families? So to do that, you have to know your audience. What is going to resonate in their mind when you're telling them a story? And then the spotlight was on China. So I went to China. Shanghai uh, for two years and what I learned from there is that the importance of doing business is the Guangxi, is the network. How do you establish relationship with people? 
So those three things, you know, attention to detail, the capacity to relate to your audience, and establish a network, a relationship with your audience, is what matters when you're telling a story. And then, um, just before the election uh, of President Obama, I moved to the Bay Area for personal reasons. Um, and I was thinking, okay, let's try to, you know, tell stories uh, for businesses instead of telling stories for, you know, the media. And it pays more, more than working for the media. <laughs> so I founded my company, Webido Strategy, embracing the entrepreneurial spirit of the Bay Area, working with freelancers, you know, on different projects, for Huawei, for LinkedIn, for publicists. Um, and it was obviously very hard because suddenly I was in business, whereas before I was, you know, working for the French-speaking media, um, working for the French television, for the BBC World Service. And then here, you know, you have to think about your positioning, what makes you different from others, what makes you unique, what are people going to remember about you. Um, and it was, it, was, it was kind of hard. Uh, but what I learned is that what helped me is that you have, when you have a strong support amongst your friends, amongst your family, my husband, um, and we ha when you have this very positive attitude, it really helps. What we used to say in journalism is that an unlucky journalist is an unprofessional one. So you have to provoke luck in what you're doing. And also what helped me as an entrepreneur is doing sports. So when I was in high school, I did, uh, participated in the French national uh, high school badminton competition. Uh, I'm a purple belt in karate. I'm a green belt in Krav Maga. So obviously, it helps me to give you some energy when I coach you. And same, you know, for when you'll be training, you know, the last two weeks at Dimo Day, it's important to, you know, to, br to breathe some fresh air to keep your levels of energy because you're going to be pitching four days. And even though you're not the first one, there are 30 companies, or I don't know how many you are now, but you need to convey that energy to your audience. So that's what I learned during my experience in the media and doing business here, and I'm going to try to, try to uh, convey it to you today. So let's uh, start with a little exercise. So please stand up. Okay, and those who are not in the circle, you can come in the circle, please. Well, uh, come here. Because you have, we have two circles now. I just want one circle. Okay, so come in the circle, please. Okay, so we're going to do groups of three. So, okay, wait. So one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, 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 one, two, three. Okay, come. So one, two, three. 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 One, two, oh, and three. Okay, okay so. Um, <laughs> number, number one, raise your hand. One. Okay, so all together. <laughs> you, one, two, three. Okay, number one here. And now it's like one, two. Number, all number, where were you? Uh, number one here, number two, and number three. <laughs> Three groups. I want to see three clear groups, please. So one, two. Uh, which number are you? Three. And which number are you? Okay. In this group, you make again uh, groups of uh, threes. Okay, one, two, and three. Okay. So one group and one group. Okay. So you're going to, you're going to uh, among among your group of three. Okay. So this is one group, one group, and one group, and there's a okay. Where? So among your group of three, you're going to find 
a common feature that you share with your uh, two other uh, friends? <laughs> so it is one, w one group, one, one group, the second group, and why are you four here? Well, okay, let me, you be four, it's okay. Three. <laughs> Okay, you're three. Okay, three. Three. Okay, and uh, this group of three. Okay, okay. Okay, so you make a group of threes, okay? And then you have four minutes. Listen, listen. You have four minutes to find out three common features. And after you're gonna come here and introduce yourself, your name, the name of your two friends or three friends, your job and one common feature that you share with the others. Any questions? Okay, so your mission is to find a common feature that you're sharing with your two or three other friends. A common feature, uh, something that you share, a common identity. Are you done? I think they're not. They're all still speaking. Yeah, they're still. Okay. Yeah, they're still okay. <laughs> Two more minutes. <laughs> One more minute. <laughs> <laughs> Groups. Let's get back into the circle. Let's make a circle again, but stay with your group. Yes, yes. The three of you together, the four of you together. Okay? Can you put back yourself in the circle, please? Let's make another uh, circle. I want to see everybody. I want everybody facing me. Yes. But stay with your group. You stay with your group. We're doing a circle and you're facing me. Okay? So the first group, which is on my right, so group of three, you're going to introduce uh, your name, the name of your two partners, what you do, and one common feature that you share with your two other friends. And you're going to do the same. And you're going to do the same. Each time a different feature, and we go around like this. And it should be quick. Okay, let's start. Just one picture. Okay. Um, All right, guys, listen. All right, one, two, one, two, testing, testing. Okay. Um, I'm Sasha. This is David and Christian, and we're all really good looking. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so I have to say their, his name? Your name, his name, his name, and... I'm David, this is Sasha, Christian, and we're all very thirsty. <laughs> I thought you were hungry. I was, he wasn't. <laughs> Me, Christian, David, Sasha. We like beer. Hi. Hi, I'm Heather, I'm with Tomatum, and this is... <laughs> Nobody knows me, man. I know you, but I have a 
I met it. Yeah. Rohit. Rohit and Tavo. Oh, Tavo. And our feature is that we recently moved to the U.S. within the last few months. In the last three months. Okay, cool. Um, oh, hi, I'm Rohit. Uh, she's Heather. He's Tavo, really. Uh, we, uh, so you already, uh, yeah. So we recently moved, and another thing is, uh, we three of us like Mexican food. We are big fans of Mexican food. Shocker. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm Tavo. She's Heather. He's Rohit, and we both three forgot to do the third one. <laughs> Hi, I'm Wynn. This is. Uh, V v Vishmar? Vamshi. <laughs> Vamshi, I'm sorry. And Vikrash. Yes. And we were all born outside of the United States. Cool. Uh, I'm Vamshi. This is Vin and this is Vikas. Um, we all like sports. Do you guys like sports? Like, not play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No third one, man. That's okay. <laughs> okay, and uh, I'm Vikas. Uh, this is Win, spelled U Y D E N, and uh, Wamshi, V A M S H I. And um, none of us have eaten our lunch today. <laughs> so I'm Deshaun, this is Lucia, that's Julian, and we all love to travel. Hi, I'm Lucia. This is Deshaun, and this is Julian. And um, who? What? <laughs> Julian. 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 Oh, I'm in the States, man. It's Julio. Julio. <laughs> Julian. This is I Lucia, asked. or it's Lucia. It's Lucia because Lucia. Lucia. She didn't say Lucia. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And uh, we all like pasta. Hi, my name is Julian or Julian. <laughs> And he, he's the Sean and Lucia, and we all love uh, the ocean. What? Ocean. The ocean. Yeah. Hi, I'm Evelyn. This is Alvaro and Eduardo. We love ice cream, extreme sports, tech, and we know that we're going to make it. <laughs> Okay, I, I'm Alvaro and I'm, I'm going to try to correct her because he's Edwin, so <laughs> she's Evelyn and uh, we all share the same passion for go big or go home. Alright, I'm Edwin, Evelyn, Alvaro. Um, well, we all like chocolate and everything else, she said it already, so... <laughs> Uh, hi, my name is Kevin. This is Hassan. This is Carlos, and we're all club rats. <laughs> we are all. Is that the U.S. term? Club rat. Uh, like you like to go to clubs, so club rat. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Hello, this is Hassan. Um, what are what what you are supposed to do? <laughs> <laughs> this is Carlos, uh, and this is Kevin. Carlos and Kevin. <laughs> uh, and we like to blow things up. Hi, I'm, I'm Carlos. <laughs> this is Kevin, this is Hosan, and we all have two syllables in our names. Hi, I'm Isaac. This is Ben, David, and Juske, and we were not born in the U.S. <laughs> Hi, my name is David. That is Ben, Yuski, and Isaac. So we are all CEOs. So kind of, I mean, come on. Ben, <laughs> Yuske, <laughs> Zach, David, Ben. So we all like beer. <laughs> Hi, this is Ben and Yusuke, Isaac, and David. Uh, we are all raising money. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jonathan. This is John, Adam. Uh, we all like sushi. Hi, I'm John. This is Jonathan and Adam. And we're all entrepreneurs. I'm Adam. This is Jonathan, John. And we all have a key fob. <laughs> Don't lose it. $50. I'm Nadia, this is Robert, and this is Taylor, and we've all been to Europe. 
Hey, I'm Robert, this is Nadia, and this is Taylor, and we all know how to ride a bike. <laughs> all right. And I am Taylor, and this is Robert, this is Nadia, and we all know how to program. Thank you very much. You can have a seat. Okay. So, what was the purpose of this game? Except learning that you are all hungry and thirsty? It's the commonality. So when you're addressing an audience, you need to establish that bound that is going to maximize your chances of being listened to. Of course, you need to do some research on your audience or the person you're going to meet with because you need to pitch him or her. But establishing you know, this uh, common path, this common ground, this common goal is going to help you, you know, uh, establish that connection. And also, what I could see and learn today from you is that what do you want people to remember about you? There are some characteristics, and I think you, know, you should work on those ones so that people can think of you under those characteristics. OK. So let's talk about storytelling. Storytelling, what is storytelling? It is a narrative communication. It's a way to talk to people, to, the, to talk to the heart of people and win them. So think about like when you're going fishing, okay, I never go fishing, but imagine, it's like you're reeling the fish. Instead of pitching, you have to bring people into your story, into your atmosphere. And that is very important to get their attention. So a story, it's three things. The first thing, a story is universal. So in almost any countries, you have the same story about the three little pigs, the three musketeers. Um, and stories, you know, it's all about human beings. It's about people, wherever you're coming from. So that's why it's universal. The second thing, a story, it's oral. It used to be delivered, you know, around the fire. People wouldn't use the internet, you know, to send videos telling about their stories. It used to be that. So when you're presenting with your PowerPoint, don't forget, you're the story, you know. The PowerPoint is just a support of your presentation. Don't make the PowerPoint the, the king, you know. You're in charge, you're on stage, you're the one who has the story. And third, the story is visual. So visual, it's you, your body language, and also the pictures and the videos you're going to put in your presentation. OK, so let's talk about the story. The story, the story it's a structure. So in a story, you have three things. The hook, how you're going to you know, reel people. You have the flow, and you have the ending. So I would say that uh, for your demo day um, story, the hook is actually the problem. The problem or your traction. Your number one, you know, at the Apple store or anything else. Something that will make you stand out from the first five seconds. So the hook is your problem or your traction. After you have the flow, and the flow is the solution you're bringing, the size of the market, the benefits, the business plan, your competition, and your team. So that's the flow. And the ending of the story is your call to action. <coughs> so those three simple things, you have to make sure that they follow the proper order to bring people in your story. And so how do you do that? How do you make it more relevant to your audience? You need to add three things. The first is the tension. So we're going to play another little game. I like games. <laughs> OK. So those are the rules of storytelling uh, defined by the Pixar Studios. OK, so I wrote in cursive, so I hope you can read what I've put. So it starts with once upon a time and every day until one day, and because of that, and because of that, until finally, ever since that day, the moral of the story is. OK? So let's make a round. Let's start here. Can you start with the first sentence and you add something? You, start, you follow with the second sentence, you add something, and it's uh, eight people. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, until you. OK? You can you know, find anything. Once upon a time, I went vegan. Wait, what? Vegan, vegan. And every day I ate vegetables. <laughs> 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 
until one day I did a survey monkey. <laughs> And because of that, I want to eat chicken now. <laughs> so, where are we? And so far, now Oh. No, and because of that. Okay. Oh, second. Okay. And because of that, I went to the market to buy a chicken. Until finally I broke down and had fried chicken. <laughs> and the last one. And the moral of the story is stay open minded in case you like meat. <laughs> Thank you. So, have you ever watched any um, Korean dramas? Oh. <laughs> okay, so it's uh, it's you know maybe 24 episodes of one hour long each, and you know there's always this tension, you know. There's the hero, there's this gap, and the hero attempts, you know, to that situation, and he cannot do it, and there comes something, and he cannot do it. So, you know, they keep you, you know, excited, you know, until the end of those 24 hours of movie, of, I mean, of series. And when you're presenting, that's what you have to do, you know. You have to excite people, you know, make them long for the, the next coming slide or your next coming step. And that's very important to keep the attention of your audience. Okay. So we're going to do a, another exercise now um, that will include two things. So we were talking about the tension. The second thing to include in your storytelling is painting a picture. So how do you paint pictures? Certainly not using um, those words that Mark are going to tell us. This is the list of the, the list of the words that were set up by uh, David Pogg, the New York Times columnist, of the words that you absolutely shouldn't use because it undermines your credibility. So, Mark, this is your turn. Okay. Very cursive, so I may screw some of these up. Uh, landmark, revolutionary, groundbreaking, breakthrough, turnkey, state of the art, best in class, stunning. Cutting edge, leading edge, best of breed, awe inspiring, decadent, sumptuous, breathtaking, extraordinary, world class, beautiful, and dramatic. Thank you, Mark. Mm -hmm. So, when you're you know, writing words on your presentation, don't use those words because it doesn't look credible. So, how do you do that? So, you're, you're going to talk about different things. How can you paint a picture that is going to reason, resonate uh, in your audience and how are you going to engage people? So, you can use time. You know, I was telling you about, you know, Normandy. It's raining Normandy. A place, a certain setting, certain mood, texture, taste, color, and sound. When I was reporting for the French television in, in India, so we went to Surat. Do you know, do you know Surat? Surat? Yeah, you know. So it's north of Mumbai, and um, and it's actually the first city that processes the, I mean, the, med the medium-sized diamonds in the world. Okay. So you're in this in this town, and there's this uh, street, one kilometer long, uh, only men, only men. It's crazy. So I was the only woman, you know, walking the street with the camera. And so how do you describe this street to people? So you're talking about like all those men, they're wearing those, uh, those pants and those iron shirts and they were wearing those, you know, blue flip flops and they're actually doing business on the basement floor, whereas, you know, second floor, they're showing all the stones. So, you know, you're trying to give details to your audience so that, you know, they can actually transport themselves, themselves in the city or where is your goal to do that. So there's tension, there's how to paint a picture, and also talking about your emotions. So obviously you didn't uh, improvise yourself being entrepreneurs today. There's a story to that. And you know, companies, invest, uh, investment companies, they're betting on people, they're betting on human beings, because they want to make sure that you're going to be able to bring your business until the end, you know. 
So how do you include your emotions? How do you include, you know, from, from your birth or from your studies or from the meetings you have, you had with people, with mentors, what actually brought you to what you're doing right now? So what I want you to do now is take a piece of paper and a pen. You can do it on your laptop, but I think for writing on your laptop, it's more for organization versus writing on a piece of paper, it's more for creativity, but you do as you want. So, and I want you to take 10 minutes to think about what brought you to what you're doing right now at 500 startups. What are the landmarks? What, you know, what made you different? What is your passion behind that? Try to use, you know, um, some descriptions, description, some details I was talking about and trying to make it relevant to, to your audience. Any questions? Yes. Do you mean like what brought your company to 500 or what brought you personally? You, personally. Okay. Yes. So I'm going to give you a... Those? Sorry. Those? <laughs> As you want. I would, okay. <laughs> So it should be around, you know, two, two minutes, two, three minutes, and only uh, maybe uh, five of you will come here and present. Volunteers.
Oh my god. Don't keep talking about this guy. <laughs> Can you go back to your country now? I can go back, but I can't stay. <laughs> they love me there. <laughs> Even after the video? We all will close in some of them. I'll just walk over this one. What more is here for the job? Yeah. What is here for the job? Yeah. minutes.
Okay. I need uh, one volunteer to come and present. Okay, you are first. Take on turn first. Okay. So, okay. You can stand here, please. So what exactly should I present? Should I start? <laughs> Okay. Uh, I'll take my place, the white one. Yeah, yes, I have it. Thank you. Alright, so my name is David Osei from Ghana, and uh, we are the first African startup here, so that is cool. So, what makes me unique, right? <laughs> so, I met David in Brazil, Rio to be specific. That is how the connection started. and. Uh, why um, did David get interested in me? I later got to know because of some reasons. So one was that um, I kind of dropped out from postgraduate school. Um, so I finished my first degree in maths and I was in a postgraduate school which is very competitive for two years. And just after three months, they actually graduated me early instead of going to two years because of um, the idea and my understanding of programming. So that got they very interested because I'm the first to graduate my team to be graduated early out of the program. The second was the people that I knew. So by then, we were getting our second funding from an investor called Igosa. And he happens to be Dave's very good friend. So he also got him interested. Oh, okay. So, and actually, he called Igosa, just in my face. <laughs> and actually, so that was part of the reason. The second, the third reason was the problem we we're solving because he thought it was very interesting. And uh, the final reason was that I was in Brazil to receive an award for being one of the best startups, whatever they call it. And he found that very interesting. So from his perspective, that is what I think got him interested in me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Second one, uh, okay, come. I'm Vikas from Swerve, S V E R V E dot com, and we are a social influencer marketing platform for small and mid sized businesses. What up with that ad? <laughs> <laughs> you never know if Dave McClure is listening to us. Man. So, we were working on our startup from last one and a half year from Edison, New Jersey, and I'm sure most of you cannot, do not even know where it, Edison, New Jersey is on the map. We realized that we need to connect with the right people and we need a thriving startup environment to make a successful company. Since 500 Startup Program is right in the heart of Valley, I found this a perfect opportunity to be a part of 500 Startup Family and give ourselves best chance to make our hard work count. We are 500 strong. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so third, fourth, and five. Okay. All right. All right, thank you. Um, so once upon a time, I graduated from school, from college in Atlanta. And then I, I begged my parents to support me for six months so I can do my startup. And then, as it happens to 98% of the startups, we failed. So we, I had to go get a job in, in Atlanta doing a stupid, mindless 9 to 5 job for a couple of months. And then while I was doing that, um, nine to five job. At my job, I was working on my other startup, another new startup. So because of that, I got fired. And until finally, I moved to Silicon Valley. After that, after I got fired, I moved to Silicon Valley. I um, I slept on my friend's couch for a couple of months um, until we did a business deal with um, a big giant in the wedding industry, and um, we became profitable. And then, um, every since that day, we harassed Dave and Christine to get into 500 startups, and, and we got into 500 startups. And the moral of the story is, eat chicken. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
Hi everyone, my name is Julian Garcia from Insta GIS. Uh, and my story about why I think that I'm here in a startup, 500 startup, is because I deserve it. I have been eight years working very hard at the, once I finished the university, I created my first company that is now very successful in a 16 million uh, people population country, that is Chile. I already broke one time. So I think that I have the, the enough experience for being here. I am here because I believe in my capabilities. I, I believe in the capabilities of my team, of you, that I am learning a lot of, 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 of every of, of you in 500. And the most important thing is because I believe in God. I think that here you don't need to be just super good for being here. You need an extra help that I think that all of us will have. So every night we must remember that and we must say thank, thanks for that. I feel that I am at the mecca of my passion, that is entrepreneurship. I am here in the best university of the world for making a company. So I feel very happy for that. My dream was to create a worldwide team. And thanks to each of you, plus the great 500 team, I think that every one of us, we can make it possible. And last one. Hello everybody, my name is David. So once upon a time, I was doing two startups. One was burning money, one was making money. And now I'm here doing only one startup, <laughs> which is Boxy. Making money. <laughs> this one is making this one is making money. <laughs> so what happened was I used to be in Los Angeles and I used to come here almost every week, uh, you know, try to connect with different people over here, investors and mentors. And I happened to come across a YC, uh, you know, mentor and 500 mentor, and I was pitching him about the startup that was not making money. Uh, it was barely, you know, just started a few months ago. It, barely had any users and he said hey everybody over here in the valley is trying to do, to, to do this you know why are you doing this but I was so adamant I was so passionate about you know that burning cash startup so I came again after three months at this time I had users we had like close to 10,000 users uh, you know like almost 50,000 people coming to the site every day and he said wow okay your you know graph looks good so I'm gonna get on this let's let's get it going now, as we were doing that, he grilled me on my other startup. He asked me, like, you know, what is the other startup that you're doing? And then he realized, wow, you're sitting on a gold mine, and you're trying to do this, which everybody here is doing, but this one that you're doing, the one that is making money, is like the Silicon Valley people are not even thinking about it. So he said, like, you know, this is the one that we really need to focus on. Now, the reason, it's not that I was not passionate about the other startup. I was very passionate about it. I have been doing it since 2009. The reason why I didn't you know, come here and pitch about it is because I thought that was very unsexy. People over here in the valley you know, would not be interested in something like that. But then I thought like, you know, what I thought was very different. So you know, he got us into the 500 startups. We could quickly got over here. We even had to say no to some investors who wanted to invest more money than we wanted to at that low valuation in the beginning. So the moral of the story is basically, you know, what you think you will be doing might not be, you know, after a certain time. So that's the same thing with all of uh, the entrepreneurs face. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for participating. Uh, one last uh, exercise before uh, we go for lunch. <laughs> Please, uh, everybody stand up. So we talked about, you know, how story is universal, oral, and visual. So we're coming to that point right now. The structure of the story is the hook, you know, how you reel people, the flow, the ending. You're adding tension, painting pictures and emotions. And visuals, it's two things, body language, and you know the use of your PowerPoint or Keynote or whatever, adding images and or videos. So uh, we're going to talk about body language. Okay. So there are three things, but we start first with the warm up. So let's do a warm up because. Okay. So warm up. Everybody, everybody do the body language. So now you want to start your presentation. 
Okay, so you can you can sit. You can sit. So when you're about to speak, you know, uh, you know, public speaking in what is one of the biggest fears of people because you know you're exposing yourself, you're stressed, or you know for whatever reason, big stakes. So you need you know to prepare your body because it's a full body experience. Also, I advise you to uh, get rid of any keys in your pocket. I think the, the, those uh, people who are presenting here and that had some keys, so avoid that because it's making some noise. Making sure that uh, you know you don't have anything distracting that uh, will um, you know distract your audience. Okay. So you have that, and after it's three things. So think of your body in two pieces. So the first piece is head to here. The second piece is from here to here, and the third piece, the third piece is the feet. So we're in America, and America, how you contact, uh, how do you establish contact with people is with the eyes. You look people into the eyes. And if you cannot, you look people in the middle of the eyes so that you don't get distracted when you're speaking. And that's how you do, you know, when you're going to networking conference, you know, establishing contact with people. Okay, so you have the look, and after you have the smile. So it's better to smile because people are going to relate to what, you, oh no, oh no, no, to what you're saying, and they're going to mimic what you're saying. So smile, it helps. The second part of the body is the arms. Okay, so I, okay, it's uh, so guys, please. Don't do that, because it looks weird. <laughs> 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 okay, and, you know, about your arms. So think about putting ping pong balls you know, under your armpits, because it creates some space, you know, and you feel more comfortable. Then, you know, straight also, it helps, because you're, you know, you're in charge, you're presenting. Uh, you are so in some cultures, pointing fingers it doesn't help. It's a little bit aggressive. So you can actually open more fingers. It looks more, um, you know, more assertive, and it, it is doing what you're saying. Um, you know, and you have this space. You know, think of your square space like this, like a uh, you know ballet dancer. Um, and so you have the sec. This is the second part. And the third part of your feet, so if you're slouching, you know, and because you're stressed, you can do like this. You put your feet, you know, like on train tracks, and you're not gonna move. But you have to move a little bit, though, because you cannot stay static. Um, you have to, you know, in here, when you're presenting, you have to, you know, invade and invade your space. You, know, you have to move, but don't ever turn your back to people, because this is very rude, you know. People will, will feel ostracized. So think about, you know, you have this space, you have to try to move within your space. Um, and yes. And then uh, I think uh, that's the only thing. Of course, there are more things to body language that I will see uh, when you'll be presenting. Um, and I will help you correct uh, those mistakes or, you know, improve your presentation. But uh, body language is really, really important because it tells a lot about your convictions, your story, and what you believe in. Um, it was actually uh, the study of body language was actually born in California because there was this uh, anthropologist who studied uh, tribes f uh, in uh, northern uh, Canada. And those tribes, those Indian tribes, he realized that when they were speaking in English, their body language was really different. So make sure that body language is not on the way of you communicating your message. Okay, so I think we're going to finish uh, the session today. So as a recap, you know, think about your story uh, in terms of, you know, pictures, flow, hook, ending, and anytime, you know, you need to, you know, convey a message, convey a message. Anytime you need to change people's minds and attitude, think about narrative communication. I think that's a very powerful tool, a very powerful technique. And I set up office hours, so please come and I can help you with that. So thank you for coming and uh, participating today. Thank you. And I have a few books about presentation. You can have a look at those ones if you want.